So I have a problem. My wife and I just got this jogging stroller off of Facebook Marketplace because I aspire to be one of those parents that goes jogging with their kiddos every day. Especially as we're now expecting our second child, I'm gonna have to get better at taking our oldest son everywhere with me so my wife can focus on taking care of our newest. However, the first time I took this thing out, I could not get over the awkwardness of holding the handlebars and jogging at the same time. Now, this is probably likely because I'm just not the strongest runner in the world and perfectly valid solutions to this problem would be to just practice using it or try to slow down a little bit. But I think this presents an interesting opportunity to design a system that would allow us to use this jogging stroller without actually holding on to it with our hands. Now, if you do a little bit of research online, you'll notice there's probably two solutions that you'll see out there. The first one is a unique stroller design that you can actually pull behind you, much like the sort of trailer you would pull behind a bike. But clearly that wouldn't work for us because we just bought this jogging stroller used, and I don't wanna have to get another one after we just pick this one up. The second solution is a little bit more compelling, but I think we can make some adjustments to it. This is an adapter that a company designed that allows you to hook on a system to your waist, which then attaches to the stroller handlebars, so you can actually push the stroller along as you run, allowing your arms to swing freely. However, I'm not convinced that the rigid connection between you and the stroller is the best solution because as you run, you bounce up and down. You're not gonna be maintaining a perfectly level connection with the stroller at all times. So I think we can build on top of this existing solution. I think we can improve it in a few little ways, primarily being allowing the system to move a little bit more freely while you jog so it feels natural, you don't feel totally anchored to the stroller, while also throwing in some surprise little updates towards the end. So with that in mind, let's design a system that allows us to use this jogging stroller a little bit more comfortably. So let's start by bringing this jogging stroller back and getting a few measurements. Measuring this distance between myself and the stroller would ultimately determine how large this design was going to be. I wish I had a more scientific way of doing this, but honestly, I just held the stroller and kind of pretended to swing my arms to get an idea of how far away I would need to be. This ultimately determined how long these linkages were going to be that attached to these handlebar attachments and ultimately the part that would attach to my waist. Now you'll notice these designs look super, super crude and that's because when you're starting on a project like this, you wanna test the overall spirit of your design without putting too much work into the actual aesthetics of it. Don't mind how gnarly these prints look, that was just because I had some settings messed up on my printer. I could then take this really simple design and just use a few zip ties to lock it into place on the stroller and then actually just use a dive belt that I used for scuba diving to attach this thing to my waist. Then I could make sure I was in a part of my shop where no one could see how silly I looked testing this thing, but ultimately you get an idea of how this is going to work to ensure that I can run and bounce up and down without jolting the stroller too much. Now, no, there's no weight in the stroller right now, so it actually looks like it's probably bouncing around a little bit more than it will in the final design when there's actually a small child in this thing. To test how this thing was going to perform with weight in the stroller, here you can see the stunt double that I used for my son. Once my dead weight here was nice and cozy, I could strap it down, attach my dive belt, and take this thing out for a spin. So by using this super simple design, I could immediately spot some things that I was gonna have to get used to with this design. Running with this is almost like backing up a trailer where you turn left and it turns right, and when you turn right, it turns left. This is where using that stunt double for my son was crucial. Okay, so I think this concept will work, but you probably noticed a few things with this. And it's all kind of obvious in retrospect, but this is why we do these quick and dirty prototypes. So when I was trying to jog with this thing attached to the stroll, you'll notice there's nothing stopping it from buckling, right? So as I would push, if it became misaligned with the handles of the stroller, it would want to buckle, right? So I think in addition to that, there's obviously the need for like a more ergonomic design, a better attachment point to the handle. But one of the things I wanna make sure that we integrate based on learnings from this design is that there needs to be some sort of resistance from moving up and down like this. Now, I don't actually wanna create like hard stops to like keep this from moving down because if you can imagine, while I'm running and this is moving up and down, it would actually be contacting the hard stop 
and jolting the stroller as I do that, which would make for a relatively uncomfortable ride for the little guy. So let's think about doing a final design of this thing with all of these learnings encapsulated, plus a few little surprises that I think you'll enjoy. So if you're wondering how I make these videos while having a really demanding job, as well as being a husband and a father, this is how. Get up crazy early, start working on these, go to work, hang out with the family after, then once our kiddo is down, I can come back to this. But after a few of these really early mornings and nights, I started to come up with a design I was getting excited about. This updated design should address the pain points that I mentioned before, like having a more ergonomic design, while also offering a few enhancements that I think you're gonna like. And then once the design was printed, I could throw it on the handlebars to get some measurement for some wire because you know we're gonna add electronics to this project. So let's look at how we can make this new jogging stroller attachment even more awesome. So it's all gonna start with our best friend, the humble little Arduino. So you'll remember this from the last build in Power Wheels um, build, where we took one of these and we used it to take a bunch of sensor inputs and perform some action. So we're gonna do the exact same thing here. So starting with this Arduino, we're going to use this tiny little sensor right here. And so what this is, this is called a Hall sensor, or I think it's also maybe called a Hall effect sensor. But what it does is detect magnetic fields. So what I think this is gonna be really cool to try to use in this build will be to detect a magnet as it spins on the wheel of the stroller. So what this is going to allow us to do is to track the number of wheel rotations of the stroller so that we'll know a really accurate measure of distance. So combine this really accurate measure of distance with time and we'll be able to have a little integrated system that tracks our pace as we use our jogging stroller. And so theoretically I could use that to compare against say my running watch um, and understand maybe how much slower I go when I use this jogging stroller compared to when I'm just jogging by myself. But we can't just stop here, right? Because this data alone on the sensor in the Arduino is not enough to be useful to us. We need some way to actually see it when we're jogging. So to visualize this data, we're going to need a small screen. So these are really cool little small screens that you can get off Amazon that just attach to your Arduino using four wires that you can program to output any sort of information that you want to. And I got the version that's just white display because I thought that might be most visible as we're running, right? So what we can do is integrate this little screen on our running stroller attachment so that we can see the output of this hall sensor that sends to the Arduino and then output things like distance and pace on this little screen so that we don't even need a running watch anymore to really accurately track our distance and pace. But there's just a few more things that we need to consider before this system is complete. The final components will be power for this system. So to do that, we can use these awesome little 3.7 volt pouch batteries. So these are awesome because they're a lot more low profile than something like a standard AA or AAA battery and they allow us to couple this with what's called a step-up converter or a boost converter. I've seen like a few different names for these things to not only provide five volts to the system, so it changes the 3.3 volts of the battery to five volts using this little circuit board. But the cool thing about this is that it already has a built-in switch as well as a charging port. So this is gonna be really sweet because what we can do is when we use the system, and really the system should use minimal power so this should last a long time, but when it does run out of battery, we can use this little circuit board to charge it back up just using a standard USB connector. So let's get all this wired up on our breadboard to test some simple software before we install it on the final system. Okay, so here's our setup. Now that we have all the components wired up to Arduino, we just have the OLED display wired up along with a Hall effect sensor. It's really hard to see, but it's in that little bundle of wires right there because it's so small. So what this is going to do is to use this magnet and I'm going to pass it by the Hall effect sensor and have this little screen print out on when it detects the magnet going by the sensor, right? So this will allow us to easily test to see if this premise will work to track wheel rotations of our stroller 
which ultimately will change this to go from on and off to actually count the rotations, knowing the circumference of the tire so that we can ultimately show pace and distance using this little screen. So let's take this and let's test passing it by the Hall Effect sensor. Okay, so do you see that? When I pass it by, it changes from off to on. So this is pretty cool because it's pretty sensitive, right? So theoretically, this will allow us to detect when the wheel has made a full rotation past our little sensor that will mount on the side of the stroller near the wheel. So it looks like everything is working as expected. So now what we can do is turn our focus to actually mounting up the hardware in the stroller and, and actually test it out. So in the final design, the first thing we're gonna do is mount the screen and the start and reset buttons. Because in addition to needing to visualize the data, we need these buttons so that we can start and pause runs as well as reset the runs when we're ready to start the next day. The clearances on this were a little tight, but ultimately in the end, they fit pretty snugly. Then I could take this three wire cable and run it through the bottom of the handle attachment. Then I could see how the screen and button assembly was gonna fit in the overall handle design. You'll see there's two little openings there, one for the power switch and another one for the charge port. This is also why I love this desk configuration because I can be working on some electronics and then swivel around, check my designs, check my code, and then come back and continue wiring things up. Once all the soldering was complete, we could switch it on and check out how this thing was gonna work. Now, I thought you guys might like this little touch where the screen clearly displays what button to press to start a run, which brings up our tracking screen, and then you can press the same button to pause the run. Then go ahead and press it again and you can restart your run, and then once you're complete, press the right side button to restart. All that was left to do was to add the rocker switch on the left side of the handle attachment, and the electronics were just about ready to go. I then used this simple design to add the magnet to the wheel so that we could track wheel rotations. So whenever we're on the home stretch of a project like this one, inevitably we find little issues that we need to address with the design. But many times I don't wanna just completely reprint what I already got done. This is when you look at your standard power tools to modify your prints using tools like this. And I love my Milwaukee tools, but it's just way overkill for the finesse that I need for this sort of a project. That's why I was super excited when the team at Fantic reached out and asked if I wanted to try the Fantic F2 Master Rotary Tool. It was actually funny, the first time I saw these tools was when I was in Costco with my wife and it didn't have anything to do with the specs of the device that drew me to them. It was actually just the design because I love this kind of super clean minimalist design. Now, in the spirit of full disclosure, Fantic is not paying me to promote this product. They simply sent me a free sample that I wanted to share with you today. To get started using this rotary tool, the first thing you're gonna do is press down on the top of the case and pull the tool out. You can then also pull out all of the attachments in the included case here as well. What I did appreciate about this is that it was incredibly compact and cordless so I could take it anywhere around my shop without having to plug it in. If you're considering this tool, a few things to keep in mind is that it's waterproof and dustproof, has 35 different accessories for different use cases like mine where I needed to clean up this print as well as open up some holes for the cords that will come out of it, while also not needing any hearing protection because this thing is super quiet. The team at Fantic was kind enough to provide a promo code for my viewers here, so you can click on the link in the description, select the Amazon coupon, and use my code JohnBossF2 for a total of 36% off the F2 Master Mini Cordless Rotary Tool. Okay, so let's get back to the video. So the last step here was to assemble the wheel sensor, which will just be this little case that houses the Hall Effect sensor. I wanted to keep this really simple while also allowing the sensor to be as close to the wheel as possible so that it could count the wheel rotations with minimal misses. 
Here, I actually just used an O-ring to attach it to the frame of the stroller, and you can see the clearance is super tight on this thing. I could then flip the stroller on the side and actually start to spin the wheel to make sure that the system was counting the wheel rotations properly. Here you can see as I spin the wheel, the distance will update accordingly. And note that the pace measurement will only update once every 45 seconds, which is why you see such a slow pace there in the video. I could then attach the waist attachment, which is that slightly curved piece you see right there, and use some two inch webbing to form the waistband for this design. This is also when I can attach those red cords, which will allow the system to flex up and down as I run, but not necessarily be hard stops that will jolt the stroller. Okay, so I'm getting pretty stoked about how this thing is turning out. Not only do I think this will really solve my biggest pain point with using my jogging stroller, which is having to have at least one hand on the handlebars while I'm running, which really throws off my date, but also something that just hit me as I was actually putting this thing together, and it's not even fully closed up yet, is that theoretically, this system should be able to track our distance and pace much more accurately than even our top of the line smartwatch can. And what I mean by that is, using the magnet that's spinning on our stroller wheel, we can detect with our Hall Effect sensor how many times the wheel rotates. And because we know the circumference of our wheel and we add an element of time, we should be able to know how many times the wheel rotates in a given period of time. So because we know all of these variables, we can combine them to get a really, really accurate measure of distance and pace. So I think there's really only one thing left to do to make sure that this system is functioning properly. Let's get everything finished up on this, attach it to our stroller, and let's take this thing out for a run. So my son's agent said he wasn't available to appear in this final test, so I had to settle for a stunt double again. Also for this dramatic opening, just imagine there's a dry ice machine that's blowing some smoke out and making this look really, really cool. The cool thing about this was that it was actually really easy to attach and get going for a run. And while it did take a little bit of getting used to, this thing absolutely rocked when I got the hang of it. Don't mind my dumb little fist bump there, but here in this slow motion, you can actually see how the system will allow me to bounce up and down while still allowing my arms to swing freely. In addition to that, it was really encouraging to see that the Hall Effect sensor wasn't falling off immediately. And while it's really hard to film this OLED display with my phone, here you can see the distance actually updating with the pace. All that to say, when compared to having to have your hands on the handlebars, it was a massive improvement. So that's gonna do it, you guys. I really hope you enjoyed watching. And if you haven't already, consider liking and subscribing to the channel. These take a ton of work, but it is so awesome to see people get enjoyment out of these projects. Because I really hope that when you see stuff like this, it really inspires you to build something in your own life. So if you don't subscribe, at least find a problem in your own life worth solving and figure out a creative way to solve it. And while you work on that, I'll plan on seeing you in the next one.